This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map. Carville for this FFA. We have kicking it off in the north. 413-534. Classic. Classic name. Everybody knows 413-534. Uh, we have as the Green Empire. This is Green Alert. Plain random drawing empire. By the way, Cyan Soviets. Crane first. Crane first in an FFA on Carville. Uh, not totally suicidal, but definitely some risky business going on there. Uh, playing the yellow, playing allies. This is Putin Julio. He's uh, putting on the Ritz, and he is julio in his way. Uh, okay, I think we have a, uh, a GG. I don't know of the MCV cell into barrack cell build, so whoopsie. There we go. Uh, yes let's we'll just move on and play the blue empire this is klaus he's uh delivering presents to all the good boys and girls around the world this year and kicking it off as the red allies this is vitamin okay six player ffa and we are down to a five player ffa already it was a quick one but we got uh we got rid of one and now it's now it's five players. So we've got Vitamin going for a decent number of jabs right out of the gate. Uh, let's see, allies, empire, allies, empire. So it's a double allies, double empire, and then Soviet game. Double super reactor, triple crane opener for 413. So 413 is either, oh my God. <laughs> I almost just said he's either going to win the game or he's going to die immediately. That's not actually what I meant. So we have one disconnect like this definitely seems like a disconnect. And then we have one player who just got rushed into oblivion. By the way, crates are on. And um, yeah, I don't know who opens three crane with that kind of a super greedy macro build and then says, you know what? I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see, Green Alert, he uses the split button, it's good enough. You know, the, the target firing with the tank busters, it's not absolutely perfect, but it is more than good enough. It absolutely does not matter. Any inefficiencies there just were so incredibly small that they just didn't matter. And uh, Mecha Bay is gone, which means no MCV rebuild. <laughs> and Klaus is gone! <laughs> okay, so uh, they are getting knocked off very quickly. We have ourselves a six-player FFA down to three players in sub three minutes. You actually, you can't complain about this one not being fast and furious. Well, okay, never mind. This, this could slow down to an absolute crawl for the next 45 minutes, uh, but boy oh boy this first three minutes has been impactful all of those people who skip to like halfway through the game just to see how it ends you guys uh well they're not hearing this i guess but they will have missed a lot they will have missed a rush a disconnect and then another rush but two different players uh executing two different infantry rushes one on the island and then the other one being green alert which means i think we are ready for a super powered FFA. We have three players rem remaining. Green, yellow, red. Very nice distinction between all of these colors. We have got, is this two allied players? Two allied players and one empire player. So unfortunately, we don't have one of each faction making it through, but we have now three players with the economy potential for six players. This is so many Tengus. Uh, legitimately, Green Alert could just kill yellow allies. He doesn't have enough on the ground. Even if, uh, even if he's got, like, perfect multi-gunner positioning, he actually couldn't stop that many Tangus. I mean, well, barring the Tangus just sit there, barring AFK from Green Alert, uh, you can't stop this many Tangus, especially with reinforcements, the potential of chopper VXs, all of that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, if these Tengus just sit here and, like, are set to hold fire stance. But uh, other than that, 
you can't stop that many Tengus. You might have to draw the Tengus off because Vitamin is coming in with Peacekeepers, Jabs, and a Mirage tank, racking himself up to tier three in terms of technology and gets out just a single <laughs> Mirage tank, which you would think Athena Cannons would be the priority, but a couple of Mirages on the front line with some infantry can be absolutely brutal. It doesn't have the long range poke of Athena's, but it does absolutely shred anything on the ground. This combination is deadly, but it's not necessarily as deadly as this Tango Transform that comes in. Green Alert already has Honorable Discharge, which means he is going to be exploding all over those Peacekeepers. One building has been taken. It would be great if there were jabs inside of all four of these buildings, but it's just not meant to be. It's mostly PKs inside of that building. Athena Cannon showing up a little bit too late to the party, and these Tsunamis will be able to run over this allied force. It's Christmas on the bottom. Red versus green, but it is not a happy new year for Vitamin. It's February, baby. We all gave up on our New Year's resolutions to eat more vitamins. They are in the trash. This is a massive amount of tank busters as well. <laughs> We're still sub six minutes. The armies that these guys have created, which granted green alert went six refinery plus an oil, Derek, six refineries all out of the gate, sub six minutes. So yes, that is how Green Alert can't afford this massive army. Even the allied player Vitamin going for one oil, Derek, and four refineries. He potentially could take two more refineries, but four refineries and an oil, Derek. Absolutely massive income, uh, sub six minutes, especially. Green Alert losing a refinery. I guess technically Green Alert went seven refinery because he had this refinery over here. Uh, barely got anything for it, though. And Dangu's chasing deep for those cryocopters, but Green Alert just giving them away in this case. Green Alert trying to fight a battle on two fronts, trying to fight with Tsunami Tanks and Chopper VX against Mirages, Jabs, and an Athena, but also fighting cryocopters from the yellow high ground of Julio. Vindicator is here. Uh, Oil Derek does get sniped. I guess Green Alert is just playing it ultra safe. Engineer needs to be sent to that Oil Derek, but very understandably, Green Alert has a few other things that he is having to prioritize. At this point, his MCV is probably uh, trying to make a run for the hills. I'm not actually sure where his MCV ended up. It's still here. So he's going to try and defend this base, defend that location. I think he will be able to do it, assuming he's been able to pull some of his reinforcements over here. Tsunamis, a couple of choppers would be nice if he got that bonus crate. But when you've got double uh, double Mecha Bay production, you can put out a lot of units very, very quickly. And Green Alert is uh, usually good enough with the control that he can e make good use of those units. Athena Cannon goes down. Goodbye to that heroic Athena Cannon. Reinforcements have been extremely thin for Vitamin, despite the fact that he's got five grand in the bank, six grand in the bank. He, is, uh, he should have a pretty steady reinforcement stream crossing the map going to help out those forces but he really doesn't so he's going to be pulling back this gives green alert some additional time to recoup and this cryocopter peacekeeper combo is extremely deadly julio has on the high ground against this particularly empire army obviously if these were flak troopers or jabs then the cryocopters don't stand a chance but against tank busters who just can't get their hats out of their eyes enough to shoot up you'd think lasers against aircraft would be incredible slicing and dicing those aircraft very quickly but it is not meant to be chopper vx's on the other hand will do fantastically especially since one of them is indeed heroic they don't actually get a kill the target firing not enough to get the kill on any of those chopper vx's red reforming his front line red now up to six refineries at least seven refineries two oil derricks absolutely massive economy plus 8.3k per minute i wouldn't even be surprised if that's not quite the correct number as these uh, two additional refineries come online maybe it'll swing up towards plus 9k per minute it is absolutely massive economy though regardless and Green Alert can do some damage, but unfortunately he's lost the Imperial Warriors, which would normally be buffering and dealing with these peacekeepers to allow the choppers, to allow the tank busters to do massive damage to the uh, everything on the ground from the allied player. But it's just, 
It's just not enough. Uh, Karma Wolf says the aircraft armor is too reflective. That would be very funny if uh, if there was something in the lore that said everyone painted their aircraft with like mirrors on the bottom, and of course you can't see it because Red Alert Three renders from the top down. But uh, you know, it just it would reflect the lasers and it would kill off. Uh, the the tank buster. So everyone sort of made a decision to not shoot up. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go with that being the lore reason for why. Now why why didn't they do that with like all of their tanks as well? Nobody knows. It's just the aircraft. Like chopper VXs, when they are on the ground, they're vulnerable to tank busters. But when they're in the sky, they're not. You know, we'll not worry about that too much. Uh, Mirage tanks and Athena cannons making short work of the once impressive economy of Green Alert. Green Alert, one, one time, oh, the bull rush! The bull rush from that King Oni never has a bull rush been so much value for an Empire player. Normally, you're lucky if you get one thing, but that trapped so many units completely caught on the, the corner of that house. That was some Red Alert 3 pack for you one unit blocking off like six units I'm not sure how many of them actually went down to the bull rush itself but that was just a massive amount of densely packed units that all got eliminated one by one by one and the bull rush took down a couple of them as well that was value like we have never seen from a bull rush in days gone by I feel like that's worth it right there uh, that watching this game was worth it for that one bull rush because normally bull rush, you know, it gets a one, maybe two units, but the combination of like the, I think the janky pathing, just the units colliding with each other and not being able to move around to that corner. Oh, these cryocopters, they're so close. The, the Apollos are also here. The Tangus will not manually engage with those cryos. However, the Apollos are going to get shredded. One, two, and a couple of cryocopters walking slowly into the death zone. One cryo goes down, a second is heavily damaged, up down to about half HP. That could have been so much worse for Julio, but it really wasn't that bad. Now, just to check in, Vitamin, who has lost a massive amount of ground army, is now sitting at plus 12k per minute, essentially doubling everyone else on the map. Uh, Green Alert and Julio, you put their income together and it equals vitamins. So the longer this game goes on, the worse it is for everyone. Double aircraft carrier production. Great move here by Vitamin. You'll love to see it. He has taken that 11K per minute, 12K per minute, whatever it is, and he's putting it to good use. He is not just sitting on it. Julio, you know, he's floating three, four grand. It's not the biggest deal. Uh, you would want him to see, ideally, he'd be doing something with that money. He's not even tier three, so you'd think, uh, well, has he gone tier three somewhere else, actually? I guess, we know we've only seen cryocopters and aircraft from him, really. So that's why he hasn't gone tier three, because he's got that tier two power. But... You know, he's got a little bit of cash in the bank, six and a half grand. That's got, starting to get, you know, not ideal for your macro cycles, but still able to, uh, still able to be resolved. Not a lot of point defense drones, but not enough Apollos here to fight these Tangus. Cryocopter, not here. It is the Vindicator that gets sniped, though. Chopper V, or Cryo Shot fires off, locks down that refinery, gets the kill. Chopper VXs will get a kill back. Not quite cross mapping, but he is getting a kill back on this ore refinery. Gets the power plant as well. Doesn't kill the ore refinery. He does. He finally transforms there. Multi gunner turret going to get a few shots against these choppers on the ground. Always a little bit unfortunate when you have to wait out that time and could just commit to it. Actually, green alert. He should just commit in with the with these with the tangus and kill off that multi gunner turret a bit faster. I guess he didn't want to get trapped on the ground, but honestly, he could have killed off the command hub, killed the peacekeeper, and then killed the oil derrick as well. Almost certainly, he would have gotten all of those targets. Apollos get shredded, but so do two chopper VXs. Ordinarily, you're happy to trade a number of Apollos away for those chopper VXs, but in this case, 
Uh, Green Alert doesn't have a lot of Chopper VXs left, so you're not, uh, he's, he's really hurting losing those couple of heroic and double vet chopper VXs. He has a decent army rebuilding. A couple of King Onis would love to see some Wave Force artillery. They're not as good as Athena's, but Wave Force artillery absolutely can poke and prod your enemy to pieces, but not necessarily as good. I assume those are Mirage tanks? Yes. So that's uh, six, seven Mirage Mirage tanks. Oh no, three more, 10 Mirage tanks mixed in with this army. So do not be de deceived. That is a massively powerful uh, allied army. That rock as well. Massively powerful allied army. If the Tengus get in the right position, that, that honorable discharge will shred will absolutely shred that army. All of those allied units are very low HP, low armor. They are a bit of glass cannons, but let's see how the engagement go. King Oni looking for the fight. They're going deep into enemy territory. He's basically feeding these tsunamis into the enemy army. Still, the chopper's doing massive damage. There's virtually no anti-air here for Vitamin. He packed along 30 grand worth of allied units, and he never thought to get anything that shoots up. Apollos show up. It literally doesn't matter. Everything on the ground is dead. The strikers transform, and it's just an easy cleanup of that army. That was massive value. EMP lands. Cryo get it on top of the army. If point defense drones were ready, then you could point defense drone the frozen units, but they're going to have to bull rush down this Athena cannon, who will get at least two shots off before the King Onis blast that Athena to bits. And uh, a couple of shots from the King Onis should do the job. All right, so only lost a couple of Tangus, a couple of Strikers, maybe. I actually didn't pay attention. EMP lands again. A couple of King Onis did get missed with it. This is a weird situation because Julio was fighting Green Alert. Green Alert was fighting Vitamin, and that's still kind of happening. But now Julio and Vitamin are also fighting each other, and Vitamin is not necessarily ready for it because those cryocopters swung in, deleted some aircraft carriers, and almost deleted one of those... Uh, naval yards. I don't think they actually got any of the production because there were two naval yards before. Mirage Tank's going to try and go to battle against the King Oni. Vitamin has his aircraft carriers helping out as well. Could be a surround from the Tangus. Just go for the kill. It's not necessarily a quick battle, but it is a battle that the Tangus will eventually win if they can box in that aircraft carrier. Honestly, deal with the Assault Destroyer first and then the aircraft carrier afterwards. That seaport is still frozen. Vitamin, I was given praise to his macro earlier, now has almost 30 grand in the bank. I think he just needs to move his MCV towards this area and maybe plop down like two more naval yards here where he's not taking any pressure. Cryogeddon going to be firing off. Jabs on the high ground. Cryogeddon freezes the naval yard. Not sure that he's going to be able to uh, get anything more than the naval yard. Precision Bomber, what is his plan here? Oh, he has Athena Cannons on the high ground now. Maybe a Vindicator to come in. Nope, forces the sell-off of the air, of the Naval Yard, so that's gone. Green Alert, rebuilding power plants. Oh, I didn't even realize Green Alert was massively overstretched on power. Athena Cannon gets stuck kind of at an awkward angle, gets EMP'd and will get deleted. Shrunk down aircraft carrier, I think has like the same range as the Athena Cannon, I'm not really sure. Uh, but Jav's gonna be eventually losing the fight with the free aircraft carrier drones. Yeah, Tengus do, uh, they are definitely more versatile than, uh, than Vikings, than StarCraft II Vikings. Oh, second Athena Cannon showed up. Got a kill on two Hydrofoils, maybe? No, one Hydrofoil and one Aircraft Carrier. Still really good value. Second Hydrofoil almost gets cleaned up. Yeah, in this situation, if you cannot knock down this army on the high ground, you just have to relocate. And for Vitamin, I feel like you got 33 grand in the bank. You either go multi-MCV and you, you spread yourself out, or you need more production two armor facilities you could have four you could have four war factories two barracks 
or if you've got the micro, if you've got the control, you know, two more naval yards on the on the north side, and then you're doing both ground, air, and sea vehicles and infantry. You're just doing the mix of all four, and you're just really pumping everything out. But that also gets a lot to control, so I get overwhelmed once we get past, like, two production types. Vitamin, maybe he also gets overwhelmed, and that's why you need, like, four war factories. He is starting to spend his bank, which is good. Julio... Uh, okay, green alert is like, I'm, I'm really worried about these two jabs that are slowly crossing the map. Is he really going to try and cross the bridge? I feel like now is not the time for a land invasion onto the island. Maybe. This is just so much infantry that's been sitting around here for quite a while. Carriers have arrived, except in StarCraft II, those carrier interceptors cost money. So that's where uh, that's where the free economy, the free unit economy of Red Alert 3 is a lot more valuable. Man, if aircraft carrier drones cost money, that might actually be a good way to balance out. Uh, I have no idea what the cost would be to va balance out how much more accurate aircraft carrier drones are than dreadnoughts because aircraft carrier drones will miss moving targets sometimes but not by the kind of margins that dreadnoughts miss dreadnoughts truly cannot hit moving targets they're great at killing buildings sure but they cannot hit moving targets and adding a cost to aircraft carrier drones which i feel like that's immediately it's like okay what is the value is it one dollar is it five dollars because immediately it's like uh aircraft carriers suddenly aren't worth it if they if the drones cost too much you get the first five for free of course but yeah the combination of v4s v4s and dreadnoughts both taking so long to hit their targets green alert a cryogeddon does not freeze king onis i don't know that if i had asked if you had asked me that question i would not have answered that correctly i would have assumed the cryogeddon did freeze king onis but uh, maybe if it's directly on top of them, it does. And that one was a little bit off center, so maybe it doesn't. Apollos show up, but this is so many Tangus. The Apollos in that situation really have to be like focus fired on the strikers. And even then, you're not going to win the fight. You're just going to take down as many strikers as you can. Strikers do manage to avoid dying to the Apollos. The Apollos probably would have ran out of bullets before they ran out of targets to shoot cryo shot or cryo copters going to be able to freeze down this refinery all of these players doing a pretty good job of pivoting wherever they're being attacked they they expand somewhere else so green alert has retaken these two expansions we saw earlier on in the game he took these two northern expansions and all of the players have been doing a pretty good job of being willing to pivot their position we didn't see like 30 grand worth of stuff get deleted here to the athena cannons on the high ground vitamin did decide to pivot elsewhere is this another cryo getting or was that just mass cryocopters getting those kills? Apollos will go down and the precision bomber will get two Shogun battleships. Bad luck for Green Alert. Athena cannons on the high ground, making sure that Green Alert cannot get anything too, too close to this ledge. Very difficult position to break for Green Alert. But at the same time, Julio will always, until the end of this game pretty much, be surrounded by his opponents. It is not ever going to be a, a day where he doesn't have to watch his back somewhere. Whereas Vitamin, he's got the left side of the map. Green Alert has the right side of the map. They can't be attacked from further west or further east, respectively. Julio, he's got a full 360 degrees that he has to be worried about. Oh, come on. This is easy. Mistake Arena uh, does get the freeze. Is there a Vindicator? No, nope. that was a very small window. Yeah, those, those Tangus, they could have turned around and dealt with those Apollos. I mean, the Apollos would have just returned to base, but 
Vindicators get jumped on. Two Vindicators down, and he's just going to go for it. Big transform, going for the Athenas, going for the infantry. And once again, that honorable discharge means that there is always a little bit of value that these Tangus are getting. Maybe not so much these last two, which everything else has already died around them. And I do love the trapping. This is one of those things we see every once in a while. It's not super often, but we do see the Nano Swarm Hive get utilized to... Uh, to trap units inside somewhere. And that was a good use of that. Maybe not perfect, but a good use of that by Green Alert. Sonic Decimator has been around for a while. Still a minute 40 left on the clock for that super weapon. Not ready to go just yet. Vitamin putting his 30 grand to good use, rebuilding the Naval Yard, rebuilding his Navy, and going to put some pressure on Julio once again. <laughs> You have a plan and it almost works and then it doesn't work. The shrink down aircraft carrier, the shrunken down aircraft carrier has shorter range. And so it was auto attacking this airfield. And because of that, it automatically moved out of the way and dodged that precision bomber, which is not what was intended. And that is a lot of dead Apollos on both sides of that engagement. And ultimately, Julio does reign supreme. Cryo get it, maybe not worth for three Riptides when there are Athena cannons blasting away everything else, but maybe it will keep the aircraft carrier safe. Uh, I just realized Vitamin doesn't have much of an air force. We've seen some Apollos from Vitamin, but it feels like he should have enough aircraft to be able to deal with four Riptides showing up to, uh, to attack his Navy. Not a lot of Dolphins, not a lot of Assault Destroyers, not a lot of stuff in the air or on the water for Vitamin, unfortunately. If you're a fan of Red Allies, Vitamin is, uh, is having some weaknesses here. Aircraft carrier will be targeting that refinery and we're sub 30 seconds. Uh, well, sub 10 seconds on the psionic decimator. And that is a sudden transport. It is not a IFV casually walking its way through Green Alert's base. This could be, you know, engineers or something like that. And it also could be a, where are we going? It could be a Eureka. Where are we going, Green Alert? What well, is our psionic decimator going to be utilized? Uh, this is a decent area. Oh, those actually aren't mirage tanks. I assumed those trees were mirage tanks, but they're not. So I was like, maybe you get the value of the allied army, but most of that is infantry. Maybe going for a little bit of a scout. Green Alert might be able to grab this army. This is where you go right there. This allied army is the target. And that's a stop command. No, he gave the stop command. He meant to do something else. Oh no. I feel, I feel that. I feel that very much that you, you go to do one thing and your brain switches them. And he, so he gave a stop command for like five seconds there instead of the split command. Uh, War Factory does go down, but Mirage tanks can deal. This is so many Mirages still left over. Wow, that allied army. That is where Vitamin's 30 grand went. He had 30 grand in the bank. He spent down to like 10K. He's back up to 18K now, but that is where his 30 grand went was into this army. Absolutely massive hit with that Psionic Decimator, like truly super value from the Psionic Decimator, but it just doesn't matter when the when the allied army is this powerful when you have an ally when you have a player who's been at like plus 10k no he's at plus 12k that's right he was at plus 12k for so long in this game when everyone else was at plus 6k plus 7k uh he was at plus 12k per minute for so long and this infantry army getting absolutely shredded. The last minute of this game has been insane for the green alert efficiency curve. Absolutely massive damage. I mean, even if you count the, uh, what is it? The 2,500 of the psionic decimator, even if you count that against green alert, he's still got so much allied army in the south here. And then that was a truly insane amount of infantry that was probably 10 grand worth of infantry i don't know how many peacekeepers and jabs that is but it's three jabs is 900 and five peacekeepers is a thousand so how many sets of three and nine or three and five were there 
precision bomber missed time there unfortunate for uh, whatever allied player tried to chop down that refinery it didn't quite work uh, it might still work if he's got a vindicator nearby or an ifv ifv suicide mission uh, point defense drones are here pretty good point defense drones Crowgeddon? no no it's a it's a chrono swap or chrono rift i don't remember Mirage tanks moving in. King Oni's rushing to the front line. Bull Rush doing some pretty good damage. Tangu's behind this. Not a lot of tsunami tanks or tank busters left over. A couple of tank busters are here. A couple of them are heroic. Once again, the aircraft have no answer. Green Alert gets the shred with the help of his air forces. And there is nothing that shoots up as Vitamin has been defeated. And then there were two. Green versus yellow. Lemon versus lime you can have a favorite but it won't change my mind because uh generally the guy on the island doesn't do as well as the guy who can take over the entire map now that's a little bit less true this late in the game when so many of the refineries are depleted but generally speaking whoever gets trapped on the island is not in as good of a position as the people on the outside by the way, Oil Derek in the top left, apparently never claimed by anyone. So there is that uh, massive potential. Cryogeddon fires off, and I love that use of the Nano Swarm Hive. Saves a tier three Imperial docks, and docks is a thousand, 500 for the first tier upgrade, and then 1500 for the second tier upgrade. I'm not 100%, but that's like three, four grand. Uh, I just messed up all that math. Anyways, that is a huge value gain by saving a tier three imperial docks for the allied player still gonna try and get it with a time bomb won't get the he won't get the naval yard uh he might get something else yeah he got some damage on the battleship the shogun battleship but not gonna get too much more than that green alert he's in the position of strength oh i didn't even realize this terror drone from that soviet player who left the game super early on uh, Green Alert in the traditional position of strength. And actually, what is he doing over here? Oh, this is two King Onis. I thought that was a, that was like an MCV expanding to the left side of the map. I was like, yeah, that's what, that's what it's about. Massive number of Tangus need to move their way over here. Or perhaps Chopper VXs and Tangus in combination could move their way over there. And no, Green Alert just decides to go for the ground invasion. He wants to take over the island and he's going to give up. <laughs> he drops in. I'm not sure what he called in. I thought he called something out. I thought I heard a, uh, a flare fire off, but maybe not. This is uh, quite a few dead Tangus. Okay, no, I guess they're just going to pull back. At the same time, it's sub at one minute until the psionic decimator. So when you've got a psionic decimator in your back pocket, why would you not wait a minute to see if you get a free or easy kill of a massive amount of uh, allied army? Like if you break this entire, actually the shoguns, the shoguns might be able to just kill off these Athena cannons. Aegis Shield does get popped. Apollo show up. There are a couple of sea wings here, so this is not going to be free and easy. There's the shrink ray coming in from the cryocopters. A couple more Apollos are getting left behind, so they will get blasted. And unfortunately for uh, Julio, I think he was thinking the shrunk down shoguns would walk into range of the Athena cannons, and it almost did happen. But then Green Alert pulled them back, and as it turns out, uh, it just didn't matter. Mirage Tank will get jumped on by this double King Oni. And Psionic Decimator is once again ready. Could be right here in the middle of this allied army. Decent number of infantry, but you really want to kill off those Athena cannons because they are so annoying. However, we got 15, 20 seconds until the Nano Swarm Hive is also ready to go. One Bonsai charging. Uh, Imperial Warrior going to try and shut down those couple of infantry units from Julio. Tangu's showing up with a huge cryocopter or chopper VX army, excuse me. Cryocopters are going to have to cut and run. They're going to have to get on out of there because that is not going to work. And Green Alert needs to keep up this kind of pressure. If he lets Julio get off of the island, this game becomes a lot more difficult for Green Alert. But once Vitamin tapped out of the game, it became a lot easier for Green Alert regardless. So 
Cryogenin going to be doing a little bit of damage to both players, mostly catching Tengus, and with the Peacekeepers inside of the Civ structure, it's easy to clean up those frozen units. Time Bomb gets called in. Level 1 Time Bomb only has the 5 second countdown, but there's going to be the Psionic Decimator to clean up that War Factory, kill the Athena Cannon. Does not get the Command Hub, though. Gets the Barracks and the War Factory, not the Command Hub or the Refinery, so it's going to be up for the Balloon Bombs to get the kill there. Refinery does go down. Balloons might make it the last one no doesn't actually get the command hub however chopper vx's could chopper vx's could kill it and green alert he has gone for the area of the map that julio isn't paying attention to which is a good move for sure getting the depleted ore mines not the biggest of deal but it is definitely better than no ore mines i mean having eight depleted ore mines is better than six and in the case of green alert where he lost the two in the top right hand corner it's nice that he was able to take the two in the bottom left the advantage that he has being on the outside is that he can take that entire map he has way more potential expansions to take so if he doesn't actually take advantage of them then suddenly being on the island isn't so bad because you've got six refineries on land on the island two oil derricks is one one oil derrick has already been cleaned up the other one still is around <laughs> that king odie's so close to death and i think that the jab will get it goes fully heroic that guy gets himself a golden little star there and that is a uh, tier three barracks. So that is a tier three command hub, which really would be good value for Green Alert to eliminate. Green Alert keeping up the pressure, a couple of different places, not going super crazy, but uh, yeah, he, he gets a medal of honor for that kill on that double vet King Oni. And I mean, honestly, you think about a single guy, even with a missile launcher, getting a kill on a mech like a King Oni, is definitely uh, terrifying, but that's a great war story for him to tell if he survives this. I don't think he will. I think it's gonna be tough for anyone to make it out of this. Aegis Shields do get popped, but when you've got four Aegis Shields and 40 Tangus, it kind of doesn't matter. Tangus are going to be able to win this fight in the long run. Tang time bomb, no! He just kills the Athena Cannon, and I think his own building. I think he had a jab inside of that building, so the Athena Cannons do go down. Green Alert is happy to trade the Athenas, or trade a couple of Tangus for four Athena Cannons, which is something that has a lot of value off of the island, or to be able to strike off of the island, as well as use those Aegis Shields. So I think Green Alert is happy with that trade, regardless of the pure efficiency numbers of it. Uh, sea Wings? I'm not sure what their plan is, but they got out of there. They decided to escape. Shogun Battleships, now that the Athenas are gone, the airfield, the aircraft have never been too strong of a presence. We've seen mostly Apollos from Julio and even from Vitamin. It was mostly just combat Tangus and Chopper VXs, but of course, Shogun Battleships care not at all for Apollos. You can build as many Apollos as you want versus Shogun Battleships, and they just do not care. However, Green Alert does need to stop this expansion. If the Allied player gets off the island, it is uh, it is a much harder game. Tangu's moving over. They're going to go for the transform. They might be able to get this nail yard. Honestly, shutting down the command hub would at least hamper the production. You don't have that tier three production to worry about after that. Cryogeddon fires off. It looks like it doesn't actually catch anything there. If it did catch anything, it was minor. The Shogun battleships do escape. Both of them fully heroic in status. And, uh, well, we got not much remaining for Julio. If he loses this little setup in the north, it's going to be a difficult road for the comeback versus Green Alert. There goes the tech. Naval Yard. Snipe the Naval Yard. There we go. Naval Yard does get sniped. Time Bomb once again gets called in, and it does get dodged, so no effect there. And now the War Factory and the, armor the uh, boot camp and the armor facility can be cleaned up by the Shogun battleships very easily. Tengu shred the infantry on the high ground. Ooh, those peacekeepers got separated from any kind of support and got absolutely shredded by those Tengu's. Green alert 
has yet to finish up Julio, but uh, it's a difficult fight. Anytime you're trapped on the island and it becomes a 1v1 or even a 2v2, if it's two players trapped on the island, you just have so few options by comparison. Bonsai Charge comes out. Imperial Warrior gets cleaned up. Tank Busters will get picked off one by one, but that's not really the army that I'm worried about if I'm Julio. Of course, with all of the depleted ore mines, it is a much slower paced game than it was in the beginning. Shogun Battleship's now moving into position. <laughs> I love the I love the switching. You go down to a tier one war factory and it's like, what do I do? I, okay, well, I guess I get Riptides. And it's like, well, in theory, that could work. But of course, Green Alert has other things. He's going to be able to deal with one single Riptide. Not too big of a problem. The only thing is you got to kill off this last command hub. Don't let him escape with anything. I love it from Julio. He has not super fast. Ideally, he would have gone multi-MCV a little while ago, gone for a second MCV and taken this top left-hand corner of the map. Sonic Decimator ready to go again. Uh, these are both depleted. Still, four depleted ore mines in the top left-hand corner. Relatively easy to defend. Not easy to defend, but uh, a sm relatively small surface area for four refineries. So, Plus, you get the oil derrick there. Ideally, Julio would have sent a MCV there much earlier in the game. At this point, Julio, you know, he's got 2k per minute, a little bit less income than Green Alert, but the amount of army that he has lost in the last five minutes is the real problem. He has lost an insane amount of army, and there's the GG. Julio has been defeated. Green Alert gets the win there in about 40 minutes of game time. So uh, big congrats to Green Alert for that win. And uh, that will do it for our first game of the stream. Welcome, welcome to Infinity Isle. Welcome to Archon Infinity Isle. This is no ordinary Infinity Isle. This is a 2v2 that's a 1v1. Kicking it off on the left side, playing as the allies. This is Atomic Prince Sela. And on the right side, playing as the Blue Empire, Blue Green. This is Alvin Tay X copy. So we have got ourselves an Infinity Isle Archon mode match. So we will go ahead and uh, take a look there. Uh oh. Why is that not showing up? Ooh. Bug? That's very strange. Part of the UI is not uh, is not showing up, and I don't know why. Nope, I don't know why. Okay, well, you guys don't get to see the game timer, so uh, too bad for you. <laughs> I'll just tell you. Anyways, we're on Archon mode. It's Infinity Isle. Uh, some of the buildings, for whatever reason, the the MCV didn't recolor. So as you can see, Prince Sela, most of his stuff is orange. And it's uh, orange, red versus blue, blue. But the MCVs are technically the wrong colors for what we see the rest of the things as being. If you're not familiar with Archon mode, it's also sometimes called micro macro. One player controls all of the combat units. The other player controls all of the stuff that's more macro oriented buildings, economy, engineers, that sort of thing. So it allows one player to just focus on unit control and unit micro and the other player to focus on production and macro. So that is what we are going to be seeing. Alvin Tay and X Copy versus Atomic and Prince Salah. We have a classic on Infinity Isle. We've seen this a couple of different times. Uh, if you want to download the Archon maps, I will try to remember to link them in the description so you can check out the archon maps they do sometimes crash it is one of those things you know archon mode in starcraft 2 it is uh you know at some point it got built into the game they decided to integrate that as one of the features works fantastically but relic thing relic three things are a little bit more janky things are a little bit more awkward and uh as a result we have ourselves a bit of a buggy situation sometimes but We've also seen lots of fun Archon maps. 
Uh, so just because it crashes sometimes doesn't mean it is totally buggy and not worth checking out. If you don't play some Archon mode, you should. And if the games are good, send them to me because I love the concept of Archon mode. A couple of Tangus going to be moving in here, get themselves a jab, might get the Harvester as well. Could potentially get a couple of uh, Apollos on exit. Vindicator will get a trade, kill back one of those Tangus, and the Tangus definitely don't want to trade against the Apollo if they can help it. But if they could get the Oil Derrick, that would be nice for the Empire team. Alvin Tay and X copy wanting to slow down the economy of this allied player. We'll be able to do it with a couple of kills on these peacekeepers. There's the transform right as the oil derrick goes down. Two more vindicators did get cleaned up and the harvester is back on the line for the allied team. It is uh, three refineries, no oil derrick for the allied team versus three refineries with an oil derrick for the empire team. And all of the tangus managed to escape the Apollo taking a lot of damage but does manage to escape as well. So low health units on both sides of the map. Vindicators gonna be moving back out. If it's just one striker, Vindicators win that fight. Nicely done there. The Apollo is here as well. If it absorbs a couple of shots, that's totally fine. Takes the heat off of those Tangus. But at the end of the four minute, 15 second mark, it is still an economic advantage for the Empire players, not necessarily in terms of units. They may have actually lost more units and have be down in terms of overall value in that sense. But if they can harass this allied player a little bit more, kill off a couple more of these harvesters or maybe even a whole refinery, they will extend their economic advantage even further which will be good. But once cryocopters get out on the map, it can become much more difficult for the Empire player to be able to get that value from their units. One airfield, a couple of refineries on the low ground, got a barracks on the low ground as well, keeping that around just in case, I suppose. MCV heading back down to the low ground. I guess they either decided a little bit late i'm not sure why the uh the miss call on where to send that mcv obviously if you want that water expansion you want to send the mcv there first and then move up to the high ground but they might have been worried about a little bit more pressure they wanted the opportunity to place multi-gunner turrets further out or they wanted the opportunity to potentially crush units i'm not exactly sure tengu's not able to catch any of those retreating air units so Unfortunately for Alvin Tay and X Copy, they haven't been able to pick up any loose kills on poorly controlled aircraft in the last minute or two. Always nice when you can clip the wings of a couple of Vindicators or Apollos if you're the Empire player. This feels more and more, you know, the longer the game goes on, it feels more and more like this Allied player isn't being punished. And the Allied player is going to get to go up to Tier 2, maybe even Tier 3, sit on their three or four refineries very comfortably, very solidly, and get to play the game their way, which is bad news if you're an Empire fan. Vindicators get the kill on the Oil Derrick, evening up the economy score as Atomic and Princilla add on a fourth refinery a bit more quickly than the fourth refinery of the Empire player. Any economic advantage that was once held by the Oil Derrick kill and the harassment of the Empire player is starting to dwindle. Oh, Naval Yard as well. So it's not going to be just a couple of Yari mini subs to kill this off. There will be the potential to defend from the Allied player. Healthy, healthy number of Tangus and Chopper VXs, especially when you add in those point defense drones. We'll see if they're actually able to get any value. Uh, poking off this power plant, that could be an easy target. Other than that, maybe you dodge and weave and nail that refinery or nail that harvester. And actually, it's going to be low power mode as well. So could try and dive in and get more or could just try and go power plant hunting somewhere else on the map. This power plant is also undefended. Replacement power plant placed a little bit more carefully. Where's the transform? The timer isn't up just yet. Okay, just got it in time. But again, strikers, you know, strikers and tangus move over here, go for the transform and look for the poke and prod on this side of the map. The IFVs will have to be pulled early to be able to defend that. Dolphins moving out. Do we actually have anything? No, the docks core got sent into the corner. Maybe it's a little bit of an insurance policy. 
Tangu's going for the transform. They've chosen the far side of that refinery from that multi-gunner turret. So this might just be a trade of one water refinery for one water refinery. IFVs will chase away that Mecha Tangu. Vindicator's gonna get a kill on a couple more Tangus. One Tangu down, the other one just lost its point defense drones, but that is gonna be a dead refinery. They might need to go for the Naval Yard as well. If they can get the value of killing both buildings, that would be even better for the Empire player. For now, it's gonna be a trade, one refinery for one refinery. But of course, a couple of Tangus going down in the process as well. These Vindicators getting one more kill. No, they miss it. And the Vindicators don't die early either. So that was a bit of a trade in terms of nothing dying on either side. Apollo's now going to be engaging. Trading one, two Apollos for one Tangu. IFV's not in position to get some free damage. I may have misspoken. Okay, they don't actually get the kill. And turns out this docks core was a perfect position down there on the southern edge of the map. And that's one of those things that sometimes it works out, sometimes it's just a big waste of everyone's time to try and hide a production somewhere on the map if you're Empire. Again, sometimes it works. Sometimes that power plant in the corner is what saves you, what allows you to stay in the game and get the win. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just a waste of everyone's time. Tangu does go down. Cryoshot is going to be landing on that barracks. Will get the kill on the barracks. Might get the kill on the Harvester as well. Vindicator comes in, kills off the Tank Buster, and it's going to be a Harvester barracks Tank Buster combo for this allied player who's now blocked in by these walls. Maybe he can escape out the side, but it's going to be Guardian Tank perhaps paying the price. IFVs do manage to escape, and it's a little bit awkward on that section of terrain, but everything does make it out. Trades are getting a little bit awkward and a little bit complicated for these players. When you start adding on the wall swag from the Empire player, trapping those allied units, it suddenly isn't as good a value. But in this case, Alvin Tay and X-Copy pretty much got away like bandits. They got the kill on the Harvester, which hasn't even been restarted. This is not only the cost of the Harvester, but a lot of lost mining time as well for the Empire player. They've lost that water expansion, which they did not rebuild. The Allies have and they lost this Harvester, which they haven't rebuilt. Going Tier 3, Wave Force Artillery, love the idea, but is it actually going to work out in the long run? This is a four refinery allied player who has been harassed very little. Oh, and the Yari doesn't kill off that seaport either. So there's always the potential of going Tier 3, getting an aircraft carrier or two, and having that EMP or just the artillery advantage. So if things were different, I would much, I would like the Empire position a lot more, but it is now a tier three Mecha Bay. I'm not sure if the trouble that the Empire player has been having with this uh, game is the tech level of the Empire. I, mean, I also don't love the positioning of that nanotech mainframe. I mean, against an allied player with a strong air presence, there is, in theory, no good spot for Tier 3. But uh, on the front line where the land units can also kill it is, uh, is not ideal either. We do have the potential of a sneaky Tier 3 naval yard. I actually would have liked that more than going Tier 3 on the Mecha Bay is hiding the tier three down here with the naval yard and going tier three for those shogun battleships and trying to hide it from the empire or from the allies sells off that uh sells off the tier three so that's it i hope you're happy we'll see if it works off works out yes indeed it did look very tasty for a cryo vindi combo but uh, no need now. Wave Force Artillery is here. Gets a blast on one Athena Cannon. Second Athena Cannon is still here. Will he get the kill? It's the race. There's the Shrink. Uh, I guess that works out. The Shrink also allows the Wave Force Artillery to escape. To not die. So there's an advantage there. But this is now a five refinery allied player. Oof. 
6k per minute versus literally 3k double the income for the allied player for a couple of minutes or i guess not double income for a couple of minutes but better income for five or ten minutes and now double income so it's gonna have to be some big moves from the empire player killing the mcb is definitely one start but this is gonna be a heavy trade ifbs on the ground get amazing anti-air boost once those units transform chopper vx's cannot fight over the water but the tankus can turn around and get the kill point defense drones being so useful here to survive to allow these units to survive quite a bit longer but it's still going to be heavy losses for the empire player and an allied player who's already got tier three on the command hub feeding the airfield feeding that war factory as well as this low ground tier three uh tier two at least on that on that naval yard Tangus flying too close to the sun or too close to the ground. It doesn't matter. Your wings get clipped either way. The strikers go down. It's a disaster for the retreating Empire player. Which month is Christmas in? Because that's a hell of a donation for the allies. They are happy to take that kind of treat any day of the week. Cryocopter, if this cryocopter gets the slowest freeze of all time on that MCV, that would be sad. A competitive first five to ten minutes of this game and a bit of a slaughter here. I don't know what had just happened with Alvin Tay and X copy. They got the kill on that allied MCV and maybe they were just high on themselves. Uh, get the Athena cannon. He just shield pops, so it'll take two shots. Uh, but they were high on themselves, and I don't know what happened, but it is... It was already a bad situation! Oh, that was an amazing shot by that Wave Force Artillery. Goes heroic and gets massive value. But once again, 7.4k per minute from the Allied player. 3.6k per minute for the Empire player. Allies have been on better economy for most of the game and both players traded out a huge amount of their army value in the last minute but the allied players have so much more to give yes the allied player just lost a ton of units there but the empire player lost way more and has the weaker economy behind it for the rebuild not a good day to be an empire player Atomic and Prince Selah, it is their game to lose. And honestly, their economic advantage has been that low, slow boil that has been building, building, building over the last 10 minutes of this game. Early on, Alvin Tay and X-Copy were in a pretty good position, and if they had been able to keep up that harassment, oh, keep going for those cryos. It almost doesn't even matter if you lose a couple of Tangus. Oh. They didn't, they didn't keep up the attack. If they'd been able to lock on to those two cryocopters, they could have gotten both cryocopters for very minimal loss, but they didn't realize the, uh, the opportunity that they had because, of course, you don't know what you don't know, and they probably assumed the Apollos would be a little bit faster to the front line. But Alvin Tay and X Copy, they were not able to keep up that early economic damage that they did at the beginning of the game. They weren't able to keep up the harassment, keep up the killing of the refineries. Another shot. They get a refinery there. Wave Force Artillery on the ground. Get the snipe. Vindicator going to have to back off because everything pulls away from the front line. That's the kind of stuff that we need to see. But how much has already been harvested? Seven grand has already been harvested from that refinery location. If they had done that minutes ago when they first got the Wave Force artillery or tried to open up a little bit of an attack path, Tengu's on one side of the map, Wave Force artillery knocking down that refinery on the other side of the map. Three more Tengu's going down. Cryocopters all survive. Bad goes to worse for the team of the Empire. And we never did get our Shogun, our secret Shogun battleship factory in the south there. Cryo get in, not even needed. It's a Cryo Blast that locks down that Athena cannon. Tier three Mecha Bay has been protected this entire game. So that is one good thing for the, uh, for the Empire player. And you know, 
there could still be a big mess up by the allied player they could sell off a bunch of their buildings and funnel all of their units into a really narrow choke point and get shredded by this empire army but uh, as long as they don't do that, they could even be playing more aggressively than they are currently. They could have gone for a Chronosphere already. They could have started teleporting Empire units off of the map. They could be trying to poke and prod at this front door, break it open with their Athena cannons. But Empire is coming for them. Uh, allies are not ready. Their army is spread out. Those Athena cannons are getting no free shots while this army charges in. One King Oni goes for the bull rush, gets one. No, he doesn't get both of the Athena cannons. Age of Shield does pop. There's Cryocopter showing up for the shrink, and the multi gunner turret holds off everything else at the front line. So this Empire army gets broken up and. It I guess divide and conquer is the name of the game. You have an empire army that already is outmatched by the allies and they get broken up into three desperate, disparate attack groups and they do not strike as one unified, powerful force. Instead, they get shredded three different sections at slightly different times. Tank Buster Surprise attempted to open up a second door, but uh, that Peacekeeper uh, multi-gunner turret combo was, you know, not going to let that happen. Double aircraft carrier. One of them has gone golden. The other one is just guarded by this hydrofoil, and it's like, yeah, you could super, super commit into this, but what's your front door looking like? Not very good. You can say what you want about allied balance, but this was not an abusive allied game. Most of this comes down to the five refinery versus three refinery setup that was going on for most of the game. Apollo's going to get shredded eventually. Nope more Apollos showed up. I was like, well, if the Apollos kill off the Strikers, then the Tangus can kill the Apollos. But no, two more Apollos showed up, and that's the end of the Tangus. MCV gets targeted down. Uh, GG is all but here. Harvester comeback. Now, there's the GG. As Atomic and Prince Salah get the win there. Alvin Tay and X-Copy take the L. Unfortunately for them, and that will do it for that Archon match on Infinity. I always love to see an Archon game. Welcome to Carville Rebalanced by Escatrality. Look, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name, but we have got ourselves a 2v2v2 on our hands, not an FFA. However, as you may have already noticed, original Carville does not have a veteran academy on it, and it also doesn't have two spawns on the northern side of the map. So kicking it off with the Green Empire, this is Deeper. Technically, he is the Deeper, but he's Deeper. Going airfield first plane allies, it's Dark Raptor. And we're going to scroll down anti-clockwise down to the left side of the map. We got ourselves the Blue Soviets. This is Noor. Spelled like new, but with an R instead of a B. Playing the Empire, it's Pershik. And on the opposite side of the map, playing the red, playing allies and empire. This is X copy. And this is Prince Salah. We do have ourselves a rebalanced Carville game. So that is what it looks like. Red versus blue versus green. Everyone spawns on the outside edge of the map. Actually, hold on. Let's see if we can... There. Now we uh, now we have things arranged a little bit more correctly for how the map is. As I said, Veteran Academy there. Is X-Copy a Street Fighter 3 reference or if it's just coincidence? I don't know. But we do also have Hospital, Garage, Veteran Academy all in the middle of the map, as well as a couple of observation posts and three oil derricks. Yes, three oil derricks in the middle of the map. There are some other oil derricks uh, dotted around the map. It looks like each spawn is basically two refineries and an oil derrick. So each set of players gets two refineries and an oil derrick, and then you have two more refineries that are pretty close by. 
Uh, actually, just looking. Whoever spawns here doesn't actually have two refineries. It's They get two oil derricks that are close by, and then they get a third refinery. So things work out maybe a little bit differently. But this is one of the many attempts by players to rebalance Carville to make it a little bit more functional for 2v2v2, since most of what people play on Carville is 2v2v2s. They're not playing 3v3s or free-for-alls or anything like that. So how do we make the map work a little bit better for 2v2v2s and not have the island spawns, which most of the time get dumpstered right at the start of the game. And then it's a massive 2v2 where different players are, you know, one team gets the left side of the map, one team gets the right side of the map. How do we split things up so that it's a little more team-oriented and that's the goal here. We'll see if it actually works out. I guess uh, this particular video isn't a great example of that because we have an FFA on Carville and now we have a rebalanced on Carville. So we shall see how it ends up working out. Uh, Allies Empire versus Soviet Empire versus Allies Empire. So three Empire players, two Allied players, and one Soviet player. For now, Team Blue are the ones who hold the Veteran Academy, so they will be getting those ranked up units like the jealously sought after ranked up engineer. <laughs> the single Veteran Engineer is a sight to behold. And uh, what is that six player map that has three it has three veteran academies on each side it is a default map i forget what it's called uh but that one you can get heroic engineers which is hilarious the idea of a heroic engineer considering how the heroic system works and onto the island goes team blue so they get themselves well blue soviets nor gets themselves four refineries on the edge of the map and then heads to the middle of the map for some more playtime fun there's also one refinery in the dead center of the map i guess in this case uh, compared to the FFA, where by 4 minutes 45, we'd had half of the players eliminated from the game. So in that sense, this is a much slower start than what we saw in the earlier stages of the FFA. But for a 2v2v2, this definitely gives you a much more solid foundation to start with that you can then start you don't just get massively attacked right in the first 30 seconds of the game and you don't even get a chance to do anything. Instead, you get uh, a chance to set yourself up. Everyone kind of gets three, four refineries right from the beginning, maybe a couple of oil derricks as well. So you get a really solid economic base underneath you. I mean, the worst player economically has 5.5K per minute which is massive income in a 1v1. And then uh, like Team Green, for example, 5.6K per minute and 7.4K per minute. So 13K per minute, really comfortable. Another Oil Derrick does get sniped there. Team Green going for the snipe on the Oil Derricks. They've killed two Oil Derricks in the middle of the map and they are going for the scout. Oh, by the way, there's an airport in the top left-hand corner of the map and a dry dock also in the top left-hand corner of the map. Massive Soviet... Uh, army yes thank you dark archangel sub zero hour being the name of that six player map with uh three veteran academies on each side uh absolutely hilarious amounts of veterancy potential on that killing your opponent veteran academies is like one of the top priorities in that game tagu's going for the transform they're going to go for the crusher crane Going to go for the Harvester as well. Shut down the production queue. Shut down the economy. It is a double-edged sword. Nope, it's a two, two hits for one. Uh, double-edged sword cuts both ways, but in this case, you're just doing double damage with the same number of units. Killing the economy, killing the production. Uh, killing your own Tangus. I guess a super reactor is a double-edged sword. You kill off your opponent's building, but it does massive potential damage to you as well. Cryo shot firing off, locking down a couple of those power plants in the north. Team Red and Team Blue both going to be fighting Team Green at the current moment. Eh, eh, eh. Tangus. Oh, sells off and no explosion. 
the Tangus get the forced sell-off of that super reactor. And this Soviet army is now trying to cross back across the map. They knocked down this green little section up here, and now they're going to have to try and defend, but it's going to take them until the end of the age to cross this map from the top right corner of the island down and across and then back up. And by that point, truly, the aircraft carriers have been able to lazily walk their way out of port and destroy the refineries the entire everything just gets shredded bullfrog's gonna get a kill on a couple of vindicators there from team red prince on x copy hanging out down in the bottom right hand corner of the map i feel like they have been attacked the least team blue has taken some damage they've lost some infrastructure team green they tried to set themselves up on the island they've taken some damage they've lost some infrastructure but team red it feels like they have been getting the free start to this game and they are the team to watch in terms of this opening first 10 minutes who's taking the most damage well it's not team red whoever it is tier three imperial docks getting targeted down dolphins i think will get the kill a little bit too slow on the fire rate for those shogun battleships and goodbye to that dolphin he gets the kill and he skates on out of there all of his dolphin friends are dead but it just doesn't matter he himself has escaped another crusher crane might be targeted down this is a lot of tangus and they are just gliding over the entire blue base on the island looking for some targets and they have found it the garage is what they wanted and the garage is what they will get they get the kill on the garage apollo is going to be cleaning that uh doing some damage these vindicators also doing some damage but like green is killing blue so i'm not sure that it's top priority for red to kill green and save blue but at the same time killing tangus is killing tangus x copy is gone for an absolutely insane amount of tangus himself he's got a cryo shot to help out from his friend shogun battleships are going to shred a number of these tangus but it just doesn't matter when you've got so many of them you can lose a couple without crying over it Chopper VX's Apollos and Vindicators all here from Prince Sela. Going to be able to push back anything that tries to show up. And no, these Tangus are not done. You thought they would be getting on out of Dodge, but they are not. MCV forced to sell off. And Parashik and Noor taking massive damage here at the 10 minute mark from Team Green, from Team Red. Both of them assaulting Team Blue. And it looks like they are going to be kicking Team Blue off of the island. You don't want to go to this island as X copy flies over that war factory and is like, well, it's not for me to kill that war factory, but it is for me to go and kill you while your army is away from home. Vindicators moving across the map. Prince Sela looking for something newer has been defeated. Our Soviet player has left the game, hands everything over to the Empire player. This could turn into a 2v2 very quickly. War Factory goes down and they look like he was trying to block in his Tangus as well. Stop them from splitting out. Apollo v Apollo, that's one thing, but Apollo v Apollo and point defense drones Tangus, when you've got a uh, allied and an empire player joining forces like that, it can be very difficult to knock them down. And in this case, it is very difficult indeed. Everything gets shredded in the sky. Prince Sela and X copy doing massive damage to Team Green. They've split open Team Blue, and now they're doing the same to Team Green. Even the aircraft carrier drones won't escape. Those are free units, and it still doesn't matter. They're going to get blasted by the Tangus. Uh, a couple of Apollos do get shredded there deeper going for the kill on the air forces of his opponent but it's going to be a tengu war in the sky apollo's joining the fight and unless there's some support from the ground that's going to be a winning fight Ooh, and there is some support from the water hydrofoil getting some good shots off their jabs going to be adding insult to injury as these tengus shred those cryocopters shred those tengus and team green wins the fight in the air against all odds they take down team red All right, 
one v two v two parashik 88 has got himself a long road to victory he could potentially hang out in the corner of the map hope nobody notices hope nobody pays attention maybe get himself a oh never mind it's a one v one v two uh massive dark raptor who gets now 20k in the bank i think a big chunk of that was handed over from deeper and uh yeah we have parachik with 5k in the bank hanging out by himself versus dark raptor versus prince Sela and x copy so uh in this situation the one team that has two sets of hands two sets of eyes two sets of brains I guess that doesn't make as much sense. Uh, they tend to be the one who wins, especially, no, Team Blue, do not fight Team Green. This is a moment for an unholy alliance. You guys need to recognize the situation that you're in and say, hey, it may not be in the spirit of a 2v2v2, but we're in a 1v1v2. Let's go for the team that is still a team. Don't fight amongst yourselves. Fight Team Red. Anyways, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, yes, if this gets to be a 1v1v2, then obviously Team Red is at a huge advantage. And uh, for the current moment, Dark Raptor is going to be losing a lot of his navy. Everything out on the water is taking a big bashing, but it may not be the end of the road because we've got a couple of Hydrofoils and a couple of Dolphins to try and shut everything down. Yari Minisubs can only do so much. Shogun Battleships aren't being targeted right now, but the production has not been shut down, which means more Dolphins can be produced. Sky Wings are, or Sea Wings are taken to the sky, and they're going to try and shred those Dolphins now that they are sky wings apollo's showing up red fighting blue on behalf of green but red also getting shot up by green with those apollos trying to dodge the hydrofoil shots athena cannon coming in from the high ground dark raptor not too worried about those shogun battleships if he can target them down with his big laser from the sky bouncing off of those satellites and i guess the the athena cannon really is just the targeting system for the satellite which uh we're not going to worry too much about that. Bull Rush comes in. Parachik gets a couple of kills here, but this is going to be a losing fight because anything that survives is not going to be able to cross map and do any damage. At the same time, there is a massive army, mixed Soviet Empire army, just sitting around up there, not doing anything. Hammer tanks, Tangus, even a bear, conscripts, King Oni, tsunami tanks, everything is here for Team Blue. Middle of the map might be forfeit at this point as the Vindicators take another refinery down. Chopper VX is going for the kill. Is there anything here that actually shoots up? Bullfrogs were not packaged along with this army. There's a couple of them up in the north, but how many units will go down while these bullfrogs do nothing? Full Heroic King Oni will get the kill on at least one more hammer tank. And this other hammer tank just continues to leech away that King Oni. And the Chopper VXs are going to make it short. You make short work of that hammer tank. Meanwhile, on the north side of the map, it's green versus blue. This is where Parashik is actually focused, and this is where Parashik is also losing the battle. But at the same time, it's a massive allied army from Prince Sela, who has taken essentially no damage this entire game, is now is going to get to walk over on top of this green base in the top right-hand corner of the map. Eventually, blue might defeat orange, but this has been so much lost time for blue Parashik is way behind where he was minutes ago before that relatively small army showed up for x copy no super weapons just yet and i don't think they will be needed green descends a massive number of tangus if this was a blue green against red orange fight maybe it would be fair but another MCV just got sniped. Parashik has lost his Empire production. And he might be losing his Empire production on the water as well. If he loses this naval yard, he is not going to have much left over from the beginning of this game. Sells off the Mecha Bay, sells off that power plant. It might just be a fire sale from Team Blue. It is. And there is the GG. Let's see if we can... Uh-oh. Uh okay a little bit of a bug there 
we'll leave it as is it's red orange verse green 2v1 and of course team red can now expand along the entire southern edge of the map which it's only one additional refinery from the stuff that they've already taken but after that they can take the island quite easily they can start creeping up the left edge of the map potentially take these two refineries over there still some cash left in them apollos might be able to get a couple kills uh, okay all right get some kills still not a great setup when it's one player versus two players but uh yeah they really needed to unholy alliance against red and orange uh jabs get a couple of kills against these tangus i don't know that those couple of tangus kills are gonna make or break the game green has rebuilt pretty massively dark raptor does have 8k per minute in income and dark raptor did get a huge cash infusion one when his teammate left the game so there was a huge amount of cash on hand for uh dark raptor but that's not going to last forever. Shogun battleships are here. Uh, aircraft carriers are locking down a huge number of these Shogun battleships, but they don't lock down everything, which means the Shoguns will be able to keep coming, and the Shoguns will get the kill on the naval yard on those aircraft carriers, and a lot of this stuff that is nearby is in range. I don't think everything is. Somewhere over here, this stuff is out of range. Uh, similarly, I think this stuff down here is also out of range. But a lot of this other stuff can be targeted down by the Shogun battleships. I think the aircraft, the airfield, and that war factory both can be targeted. All right, Prince Sela needs to not die to this Tangu Apollo allied ground army. Cryogeddon going to be firing off. Uh, kind of a bizarre Cryogeddon. There isn't an army that this is forcing you into. One of the advantages of Cryogeddon is even if they dodge the Cryogeddon, Oftentimes their army is now split up in a way that allows you to take advantage. You can kill off half the army, but in that case, they just dodged the Cryogeddon and also there was no army to force the engagement. So Dark Raptor just kind of got a free Cryogeddon. Like that timer is now reset. We'll see if he's able to do it. Uh, Mirage tanks pushing forward, maybe a little bit too far ahead. Tangus need to move in and transform. They need to buy time for these Mirage tanks to get back up to full size because otherwise these jabs will be shredded. IFVs are here. Most of the Mirages have gone down. So that's now a favorable trade for the jabs against the IFVs. Athena Cannon on the back line, bringing some damage from downtown, but it is now a massive air army that was not accounted for. Apollo Apollo's fighting Apollo's and Tangus, but the Vindicators will get the kill on everything on the ground. Cryocopters are going to have to wait out the Aegis shield, but if there's nothing in the sky, then there's going to be nothing on the ground. And that's going to be it for Team Green. The fire sale is happening. Those dots are turning small on the north side of the map. And that's the end of the game. 20 minutes done and dusted. Dark Raptor takes the L. Prince Sela and X copy. They win the 2v1v1. Who would have thought that a player with two team with with a team with two players would win against one player individually? Not a crazy game there, but always love to see the rebalanced Carville. I think that'll do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cyber signing out.